والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وصحابته المنتجبين قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق ليشهدوا منافع لهم ويذكر اسم الله في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام فكلوا منها وأطعموا البائس الفقير ثم ليقضوا تفثهم وليوفوا نذورهم وليطوفوا بالبيت العتيق صدق الله العلي العظيم In the previous session we spoke about uh, the preparation for Hajj and uh, I'm going to uh, go over them at the end of tonight's presentation uh, but tonight we pick up from where we left last week we said most of you are going to go to Medina inshallah most of you are going to go to Medina some of you are going to go first uh, to Mecca and then after Hajj you're going to go to Medina but most of you are going to go to Medina and Medina, of course, if you look at the map, is in the north and Mecca is in the south. And the distance between them is 400 kilometers, which is almost 300 miles. And this distance usually takes, uh, during the Umrah time, takes some, somewhere between, you know, depending on, you know, your driver, if your driver is Saudi, then that would be two hours, you know. Yeah. He beats Schumacher, you know, in his speed. But uh, if, uh, you know, usually four hours. But during the Hajj, this period takes somewhere between seven to eight to nine, sometimes ten hours because of the traffic. And uh, not only the traffic, but they have to check the passports before leaving Medina and then check in before entering Mecca. So this process takes some time. So you have to be patient. And Hajj is a journey about patience. You have to be very patient in Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing our patience in Hajj. So you have to be, you have to cool down, you know, and be patient. And every minute spent there, inshallah, is recorded in your D1, is recorded in your file. You are not missing anything. Every minute, every delay, there is a credit for you. So in Medina, we're going to, uh, we're going to, after finishing the ziyara, as I mentioned last week, the ziyara of the Prophet wasallam, the Imams of the Baqi', and there are other sites like Masjid al Qiblatain, Masjid Quba, you know, Uhud, and others. Al Masajid al Sab'a, uh, you're going to visit some historic sites in Medina. Then, on the day of departure, they tell you, for instance, tonight or today in the afternoon, we're going to leave to Mecca. You have to do the following. You have to do the following. Number one, and remember, we are doing the Umrah first. Hajj consists of two parts. Hajj do qismat dorad. Yiki qismat. قسمت اول بهش میگن عمره و قسمت دوم قسمت حج. So we have two parts. The first one is عمره. And uh, the حج has three types. حج القران و حج الافراد و حج التمتع. The one we are doing, the one we are doing that applies to us is only one type, which is حج التمتع. القران و الافراد, these two apply to the people who live in Mecca and around Mecca. But since we do not live there, we live outside, then we perform Hajj al-Tamattu. Remember, always Hajj al-Tamattu, because you're going to use this word frequently there in your niyyah. When you want to do the Rami, the Tawaf, the Sa'i, all these you have to, you have to mention the niyyah, utter the niyyah, so you have to remember you are doing Hajj what? Tamattu. Why they call it Tamattu? Tamattu in Arabic is pleasure and enjoyment. 
And there is a reason for it Because Hajj consists of two parts Umrah and Hajj Umrah, why do we do Umrah? We do the Umrah because as I mentioned last week In order for us The people who are not the inhabitants of Mecca Any time Any time During any time throughout the year You want to make it into Mecca You have to wear the Ihram You cannot go with the plain clothes you have to wear the ihram. This is a condition to enter the city of Mecca. Unless you are the citizen of, of Mecca, then you have different rules. But if you are not, any time you want to go to Mecca, you have to put on the ihram. You cannot go with your civilian dress. And not only the ihram, you have to do the niyyah of ihram, and you have to do the umrah. You cannot enter Mecca just you know, for fun, half a day, let me just go and do tawaf. And you have to do the Umrah every time you want to go. Unless, unless we are in Hajj and something happens, something emergency happens that you have to leave Mecca to go to Jeddah, for instance, then you can go to Jeddah and come back without Ihram, only for emergency. But under normal circumstances, you have to do the Umrah. Because Mecca is a sacred city. And for this sacred city to go to it, you have to go with a special, you know, circumstances. You have to do the Umrah. Now, why it is called Hajjut Tamattu' Al Tamattu' Hajjut Tamattu' This is the one we are doing. Hajjut Tamattu' And we have Umrah. We have Al Umrah Al Mufrada. If you go other than the time of the Hajj, if you go in Ramadan, if you go in in let's say Muharram, Safar, Rabi' Awar, Rabi' Thani, Jumada, Rajab You do Umrah Al-Umrah Al-Mufrada Al-Umrah Al-Mufrada Because we have two types of Umrah This is the one when you go by yourself Not during the Hajj season You do Al-Umrah Al-Mufrada But when you go during the Hajj season You do what type of Umrah? Huh? Umrah al-Tamattu. Umrah. This is Hajj al-Tamattu. This is Umrah al-Tamattu. Because this is is linked to this. This is an introduction to this. The Umrah is always an introduction, a preface to the Hajj. Muqaddimay baray Hajj. Umrah al-Tamattu. Ye muqaddimay baray anjam Hajj al-Tamattu. Bayad anjam bidi. Now, why they are called Tamattu? Because between Umrah and between Hajj. There could be two days, three days, five days, ten days, depending on the schedule of your, your group. Usually it is seven to eight days. Usually we leave Medina on the first of the Hijjah. On the first of the Hijjah. We arrive in Mecca on the second, early in the morning. On the second of the Hijjah. And we leave Mecca to Arafat on the 8th of the Hijjah. So between the 2nd, usually, between the 2nd and the 8th, you are in Mecca. How many days between the 2nd and the 8th? Six days. In this six days, in these six days, whatever was forbidden for you to do during the Ihram, you can do it. Relationship with your wife, or any other things to cut your hair it's okay while during the ihram you know 25 things are forbidden only two things we cannot do still they are haram what are they the hunting hunting and cutting the trees they are always forbidden for us whether we are wearing ihram or you are wearing civilian clothes whether it is before Hajj or after Hajj or in the middle between Umrah and Hajj, two things, remember, are forbidden. Hunting, hunting animals, not fishing, hunting, and what else? Cutting the, the green, whether it's a tree, whether a grass, whether small, whether big, you cannot cut the tree while you are there. So be careful. Sometimes you find you see trees in Mecca, huh? Don't go and just get the leaf and, you know, as a souvenir. Don't cut the trees. Do not. Don't work as a gardener in Mecca. Yeah. So these two things uh, we should not do. Now, what we do, what 
What are the first things we do? No, I don't want to see this one now. Later on. I want to begin with the, with the Umrah, with the Ihram of the Umrah. Yes. And let me explain to you. Umrah has five steps. If you want to write them down, Umrah, this is the first thing we do. Abbanin chizika and jammidim, chie, dustana aziz. Umrahs dige. Abbanin karika and jammidim, Umrahs. And the Umrah has five things. Awwalu shayin nabda'u bihi, hiya Umratu tamattu'u. وَلِعُمْرَةِ التَّمَتُّعْ خَمْسَةُ أَرْكَانِ خَمْسَةُ أَرْكَانِ Number one, there are things that are recommended and others are mandatory. So the first thing we do is the recommended thing, which is the shower. The shower is not mandatory. The shower of Umrah is not mandatory. Salaam alaikum. It's recommended, mustahab. So if you don't want to take a shower, it's okay. But it is highly recommended that before you begin putting on the ihram, you take the shower of the umrah. How is the shower, my dear brothers and sisters? How the shower is performed? Any religious shower, any ritual shower, how do we perform it? I'm sure you know about it. Huh? There are two... Ah. Ahsan. Exactly. So we have two ways, two methods. Either, either there is a swimming pool and you submerge. You do the niya and then you submerge. You dive, okay, for a second. So your whole body submerged underwater. Or you go to the shower, you do the niya that I am doing this ghusl. You specify the name of the ghusl, what type of ghusl. In this case, you say the ghusl. Not, not the Hajj. The ghusl of the Umrah. Umrah al-Tamattu. Remember, huh? be, you have to be aware. We are not doing Hajj now. This is Umrah. الشيء الأول الذي نعمله بعد ما نخلص من زيارة المدينة والهذا ريد نخرج إلى مكة Umrah al-Tamattu. تسمى Umrah al-Tamattu. فأول شيء تختسلون غسل إحرام Umrah al-Tamattu. You take the shower. So the niya, you are doing the shower of Umrah, not Hajj yet. It's not, don't, you know, it's not Hajj now. Hajj, when we arrive in Mecca, inshallah. So this one is Umrah al-Tamattu. And the shower is to wash the head and the neck, then the right side, the whole right side, back and front, front and back, and the whole left side. This is the shower. And the water has to reach your entire body. Your entire body. The water has to reach your entire body. Okay? And if you want to wash yourself, it's okay with soap, with shampoo, soap. But then you clean it and you start the process of showering yourself. Okay? Fragrance free if, listen to this, if the time between the shower and the niya is too short, let's say 15 minutes, because then the fragrance is going to remain in your body and your hair. But, if the time that separates between the shower and the niya in Masjid al-Shajara is three hours, four hours, five hours sometimes, then there is no fragrance left. At the time you mention the niya, there is no fragrance. Then it would be okay. Are you with me? Let me say this in other languages. برای اینکه محرم باشیم نباید عطر بذاریم یعنی حتی بوی شامپو هم نباید باشه ولی اگر ما رفتیم و غسل کردیم با شامپو که بوی خوش داره ولی نیت ما بعد از چهار ساعته پنج ساعت که دیگه بو نمیمونه معمولا اشکال نداره اما اگر فاصلش کم باشه باید شورمون با یه شامپو انجام بدیم که بو نداشته باشه لذلك لا يجوز استعمال الصابون ومسحوق أو, أو, أو الشامبو للرأس إذا كان فيه رائحة رائحة جيدة يعني تقريبا فيها هي الشامبوز فيها مو شكل أي. So you can buy from, from Medina you can buy fragrance free soap and shampoo you can buy it from here and you can buy it from Medina So you take the shower the niya, 
the shower and immediately what do you do? Putting on the dress, the ihram. Putting on the ihram. This is the ihram and I, we brought the ihram last time. If you, uh -huh, okay. And we mentioned the ihram, my dear brothers and sisters, last time. We will go over that, inshallah, later on. So, uh, putting on the ihram after the shower. You don't go back to your dress, huh? You don't go back to this normal dress. Because once you go back to the normal dress, you void your shower. You have to take another shower. Are you with me? You don't go back to the normal dress. So once you do the ihram, then you put on the ihram. When you do the shower, you go immediately to the ihram without separation. And then we wait until we leave Medina, the hotel. Where do we go from the hotel? Usually where do we go to? To Masjid al-Shajar. Masjid al-Shajar. Do we have a picture of Masjid? No. We have it standing outside. Okay. okay, let me sh see that picture. So the first step, Masjid al-Shajar. Masjid al-Shajar. This is the masjid from outside. This has been modernized. I remember this masjid back in the in the 70s was a very dark, small, you know, place. It was very crowded. There were no bathrooms, no showers. But now you can see there is um, it's a huge facility now, inside and outside, and huge parking lot, and there are showers. So we go to Masjid al-Shajar, which is about 15 minutes drive from downtown Medina, without the traffic, of course, without the traffic, 10 to 15 minutes. With the traffic, maybe 25 minutes at the maximum. You arrive here in Masjid al-Shajara wearing the ihram, and then we go inside the masjid. Usually we do Maghrib and Isha prayers. Maghrib and Isha prayers. And then we do what immediately after the Salat? What is the fourth? After going to Masjid al-Shajara, what do we do? Niyya, Niyya. Niyya, yes. We do the Niyya. And the Niyya is? The Niyya of the Ihram, I will say it. No, I, I will translate that. The Niyya is that you are you are beginning your ihram, consecration ihram. Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. The ihram of umrat al tamattu Remember, not hajj, huh? This is what? Umrat al tamattu Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Ihram. Niyaro? Bale. Ihram umraye tamattu. Muhram mi shabam. Ya ihram umraye tamattu ra mi bandam. Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. بله باید بگید بله در همه این اعمال باید این کلمه رو بگید and then احرمو هذه الحجیه هاي النية طبعا علمكم اياها هناك اذا نسيتوها مو مشكلة هناك نعلمكم النية احرمو لعمرة التمتع قربة الله تعالى اذا جاي اول مرة تقلين لوجوبه اذا جايين نيابة عن شخص اخر تقولون نيابة عن فلان الفلاني إذا جايين مرة ثانية تقولون بما في الذمة فإحنا نعلمكم هذه So this is the first thing is the niyyah We say the niyyah together Of course in this masjid If you go back to the, to, to the picture if In this masjid, masjid al-shajara They separate men from women In Saudi Arabia you have to embrace for separation there Separation of the genders That's it Say to your wife, Khuda Haf is here. I'll see you when we come back to LAX. No, I'm kidding. You can see her there, inshallah. But don't have too much expectation. So, uh, there in Masjid al Shajara, there are two entrances, separate entrances. Women are going to go from one entrance and men from another entrance. But at the time of the knee, inshallah, we're going to be with you there. We're going to be with you to tell you for brothers and sisters, we're going to come to you and teach you the niyyah. So do not worry about that. The other issue that I'm going to mention next week, inshallah, 
for those women who cannot enter the masjid because of their period, we would tell you what to do. You can still wear the ihram and do the niyyah and come to Mecca with us, but with some differences. I'm going to explain that next week by yourself, only sisters. At the end, we sit with you for 20 minutes to discuss the affairs of women there. I mean, when they are during their period. So, immediately after the niyyah, what do we say? After the niyyah. Who can tell me what we say after the niyyah? We say the following, and I want you to follow me. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. The way I say it, please. Pronounce it the way I say it. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharik laka labbaik. إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك. And the beauty begins here when you begin this journey, declaring لبيك اللهم لبيك. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. You invited me, لبيك. In Arabic is when someone calls on you. And you say to him, yes. So yes, labbaik means yes. Yes, I am here. You invited me when Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Allah, when he built the house, Allah said to him, Ya Ibrahim, wa'adzin fil nasi bil hajj. Now I want you to proclaim hajj for the masses. And at that time, there were no, no, no one in that desert. Only two male and one female. Ibrahim, Ismail and Hagar, the mother, the wife. Only three people. So Ibrahim said, Ilahi, are you kidding me? Where are the people who I go to the mountain and call their name? There are no people. Allah said, Ya Ibrahim, you do your job and I do my job. Your job is to go to the mountain and proclaim and invite. And say, Ayyuhan nas halummul hajj. All the people, come to the hajj. Answer Allah's invitation And my job is to make sure That your voice is going to reach The masses Even those who are unborn They're going to get the message And this invitation From you And this is what Ibrahim did So today in Masjid al-Shajara When you say Labbaik You are responding to an invitation That came to you 4,000 years ago From Ibrahim That's I am here. A Khuda man a madam. Shuma man a da'bat kardid. Ma man amal on a madam. Dalam da'bat shumara istijabat mi konam. A madam. Bekhani is to a madam. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. There is no, there is no associate with you. La sharika laka labbaik. Inna alhamd. Indeed, all the praise, wal ni'mata, the blessing, in alhamda wal ni'mata laka wal mulk, and the domain and the kingdom only belongs to you. I have no other leader, no other boss to submit myself to him. The only one I submit myself to is you, Ya Allah. And now I'm, I'm, I'm your guest, so take care of me. I came, and I am your guest, and the only one who can take care of me is you, Ya Allah. Okay. So once we say Labbaik, and it is mandatory to say Labbaik one time, my dear brothers and sisters. Al Wajib and to to call it Talbiya Marra Wahide. Yikbar Hatman Boyd Inu Bigid. Bali Bishtaraz Yikbar Mustahab Mishe. Hamishe in Kalimero Bigid. So at least we have to say it one time, but we will keep repeating it. Then when we finish the ihram and labbaik Allahumma labbaik, we go back to the, uh, to the bus there. We board the bus and this will be after Salat al-Isha. Now it is almost dark, 7, 7.30, 8 p.m., depending on the traffic, on the people, because this masjid is very crowded, very, very crowded. So by the time we finish, it could be 8 p.m., and then we board the bus again and we head where? South to where? To Mecca, inshallah. Now, let me remind myself and remind my dear brothers and sisters of 
certain important things that we have to remember them. We have to be very careful about them. This journey of Hajj is the most important journey in your life. There is nothing more important than this journey. So you have to be there. You have to be present, not only with your body, but most importantly with your mind and with your soul. This is a spiritual journey. And you have to make the most out of it. Have you seen kids when they go to Disneyland? They make sure that they go to every ride. Sometimes twice, three times to every ride. They don't miss any ride. You take them 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning till midnight. Full of energy. They make the most out of it. We have to make the most out of this journey. It's a pity that we miss the dhikr and miss the beauty and the closeness and the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this journey. And nothing more hurtful to the shaitan than seeing you being with your Lord. So he will do his best to distract you. Shaitan is waiting for you as soon as you leave Masjid al-Shajara. He's waiting for you just to distract you and to spoil this journey not to let you enjoy this journey shaitan comes there he might not come to us now but when you do something important he comes to to distract you from your goal so you try sometimes some people unfortunately they forget why they are here they get busy with a cup of tea. If you don't give him a cup of tea, you make a big fight about it. Where is my tea? Where is my shoes? Where is my slippers? Where is my... This is the work of the shaitan. Be very careful. You are not there to have a cup of tea. Even if you miss it one day, you are not going to die. So try to focus on dhikrullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the remembrance of Allah. On the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let the shaitan get close to you and win over you. Do not. Do not give him this privilege. So once you leave Masjid al-Shajara, keep yourself busy with dhikrullah ta'ala. Either labbayk Allahumma labbayk, have tasbih with you, dhikrullah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, shukran lillah, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, or... If you are tired, sleepy, sleep. At least sleep. But don't talk to the next, you know, someone who's sitting next to you about what shopping you did in Medina, what shopping you want to do in Mecca, how much you purchased this for, how much you purchased that. Don't speak about dunya. Huh? Believe me, that is a big loss for us. Huge loss for us to leave our families and our homes and we go to this desert with all the... The, the hustle and the difficulty and then we get involved and engaged in the talk about the dunya and the food and the shopping and this and that. Don't do this. Do not avoid that. Avoid that. Saikuni dustan azizan shaitan darin safar as shama su estifade nakone. Shama ra gul nazane ha. Shama nemitunid har ruz berid makke. Har sal shayad muafak nashid. Shayad in fakat tanha safar dar zindagi tun. نظرید شیطان بیاد شما رو گول بزنه چون میاد شیطان تا شما احرام رو شروع کردید میاد شیطان و شروع میکنه که شما را فکر شما را اصلا منصرف کنه فراموش میکنید شما چرا اومدید اینجا هیچ. بیاد همه چیز میفتید فقط حج و فقط خدا سعی بکنید نظرید این فرصت رو به شیطان بدید try to be very smart smarter than the شیطان so dhikrullah, remember in this trip, is about dhikrullah ta'ala. Forgiveness, astaghfirullah, remember your sins, what we did to ourselves and to others. If we have done something bad to others, we do istighfar on their behalf. And what is better than this journey, this desert? You know in this desert, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he traveled from this point, Masjid al-Shajara to Mecca. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, they traveled this desert on foot 25 years, 25 times. 
25 Hajj season 25 Hajj season Hassan and Hussein they used to walk in this desert they used to walk people would come to them and they say to them Yabnay Rasulullah you are the two sons of the Prophet we have camels we have rides they said Alayna ala nafsina an nahujja ma we made a vow we have camels we have rides we have money takes to walk seven days seven days from Medina to Mecca seven days to walk they said we made a vow a pledge with our Lord that we travel to him walking we love to travel to him walking Hassan and Hussein 25 times 25 hot season this is a very holy desert this is a very holy highway. So try to make the most out of it. If we have done something bad to our friends and neighbors, let's do istighfar on their behalf in this highway, in this journey, in this four or five hours. And remember to speak to Allah. If you can read dua, Quran. If not, I said, if not, you are tired, sleep. Please sleep, shut your eyes and save your energy for Mecca. But don't speak about dunya. Please do not speak about dunya. Try to stay away from dunya in this journey. In safar safar bandigis dostan azizan. Safar luxury or hotel fulan chinan setareye. No, man muhalifam. Midunid? Man khodam. Behtarin guru haro man daabat mikonan. Guru ha ke punzah hazar dollar. Man migam man mikham beram ba guru chun amdan miram. Man mikham safar bandigi beram. Mikham bande khoda basham. و الله هتل من بهترین هتل های دنیا رفتم همه جای دنیا هم رفتم ولی تو این سفر عمدن نمیخوام سفرم سفر لگجری باشه میخوام سفر بندگی باشه میخوام سفر بند... عمدن میخوام سفر بندگی باشه This is the trip off to prove our servitude our submission to Allah It's not to eat the best food Don't let the shaitan overcomes you and says Where is the five star hotels? Where is Food, you have the best food here. You want best vacation? I teach you how to go to Hawaii. I get you get good deal. Go Hawaii, six star hotels, good food, good vacation. But we are not in Mecca and Medina. We are not for this. In Mecca and Medina, we are, we are going for the vacation of the ruh, the soul. We go there to deliver ourselves from the punishment from Jahannam. This is why we are there. We are not there to eat the best food and to... Forget about food, forget about sleep, forget about comfort. Prove that you are Allah's slave. We are Allah's slave. And the more hardships you sustain, the more thawab you get. Al-ajru, the hadith says, Al-ajr ala qadr al The more difficult you encounter, the more credit you get. The less difficulty, the less credit. It's up to you now. And I, as I said last week, this trip is to make mileage, huh? points, to accumulate points. Why do we go to Hajj? To make points. As much as we can. As much as we can, we have to make points. These are the forbidden things that we cannot do while we are in the state of Ihram. In chizare ki mibini, in ha, bakhti ke mohrim mishim dige, in chizare bayat dige bezarim kenar. یه چیزایی که درباره زینت زینت ظاهری اینا رو زینت دیگه نذاشته باشیم اینجا خودتون رو خوشکل کنید فلان برای شوهرتون برای هم ولی در مکه نه دیگه مکه دیگه جای خوشکلی چی قلب و دل دیگه صورت و اینا فورگت اباوت ایت دیس ار دی تینگز دت وی هاف تو استی اوی فروم محرمات الاحرام تینگز دت ار فوربیدن while you are in this holy journey things that and you can look at them and see that Allah does not want you to focus on your shape physical shape in this journey Allah wants you to put all your focus where? where? on your spirit on polishing and refining and cleansing your soul your nafs قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ Zakaha. Waqat khaba man Allah says here, forget about your physical shape. 
I want you to be equal, the rich and the poor, the one who belongs to this family tree, to this tribe, he is Sayyid, he is master, with the one who is a slave from Africa are equal. You have to walk on the same land, on the same soil, sleep on the same dust, and eat the same food. This is equality. Allah says, I want you to be equal here. Forget about luxury. Forget about checking yourself in the mirror and what is you know, here and what is there. Forget. I want you to put all your focus on your ruh. Try to nurture it. Try to cleanse it. So these are the things that are haram. Looking into the mirror for a beautification. But if a driver looks into the mirror because he's driving, it's okay. But for the purpose of beautification, you cannot look into the mirror. From the time you begin the ihram until the time you finish the ihram. Don't look into the mirror. Now, when we go to certain buildings which has elevators and they have mirrors, sometimes they cover them with, with sheets, with newspapers, so you do not accidentally. But if, if accidentally you go to the bathroom and there is a mirror and you see yourself, it's okay. We are talking about not the involuntary. We are talking about the voluntary looking. The one that you do it on purpose. But if accidentally, it's okay. There is no penalty in that. Okay? Motivajjihid, nigah kardan amdi be ayne na bayad. La yajuzun nazar fil miraat baad al ihram baad khalas. Men shuf nafisna. Shikilna sa'id, nazil, sha'arna madri a'waj adil. خلاص إلى أن ينتهي الإحرام لا نفكر لا بالزينة ولا بالدنيا ولا بالجمال الظاهري نفكر بقلوبنا then for the brothers may wearing sewn clothes is forbidden strictly forbidden including underwear huh? because I have seen some people they forget when they take the shower of إحرام then they put the underwear and then suddenly halfway through or sometimes in Mecca while we are doing tawaf he tells me Sayyid I have underwear no 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 sewn dress for men only you have these two pieces these two pieces like the kafan and this is one of the philosophies of ihram is to remember the kafan 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 has three pieces this one has two pieces one for the upper side Hisham, you did this last year. Would you volunteer this year? Yalla, Habibi. Hajj Hisham al-Khatib, Allah blessed him. Habibi, Hajj Hisham, since he came to the school of Ahlul Bayt, he is from Palestine. He has been to Hajj seven times? Maybe seven, eight. Inshallah. May Allah accept his Hajj. Very yeah. sincere person. Very sincere brother. So you can see, one part, uh, Um Ali, do I have the... Himyan, Himyan, And you can buy this from Medina, by the way. You buy it. Don't worry about getting it here. You can't find it here, by the way. So, yeah. And the Himyan, the Himyan. This is the symbolic Himyan. Yeah, this is my size, not Hajj Hassan's size. So. But when you put it this way, and you fold this over it here. And you need the Himyan. You need this one. Without this, you will be in trouble, I am telling you. Because this one is easily gone. And you become like Adam and Eve in paradise, you know. So, you have to have... Because one year, we had a reporter from LA Times, three years ago. He came with us. And he insisted that he did not, because he had a big, big tummy, you know. So, suddenly, in Masjid al-Shajala, I mean, he was <laughs> shouting, Sayyid! <laughs> So I went and I purchased one for him. Three dollars, you know. Three dollars saves your dignity, huh? Don't say, no, I am sure I, I can... You can buy it there, yes. So this is the lower. When? He finished his haram quickly. Okay, so this is the, the lower part and then the upper part. And some people... We will teach you there. Do not worry how to keep it on your body because you are not allowed to show your body. There are. You can. You can dry yourself with another towel and then, yes, put this on. Aha, uh -huh. you put this part here. Two shoulders. Uh -huh. Cover two shoulders. 
cover two shoulders. You have to cover two shoulders. In the other traditions, other schools of thought, they, they, they leave one, sh- one, shower, uh, one, one shoulder open. We cover two according to the Prophet wasallam. We cover both shoulders. This is the way. See, this is the back and this is the front. Uh-huh. This is Armani designer. Hmm? No, 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 no. Different sizes. Different. Different sizes. No. Different. Four or five or six sizes. Yes. And also the thickness also different. Because sometimes the Hajj is in the summertime. Sometimes it's a winter side. So, so try to get this year. Hajj is in November. So the weather... No, no, no. It's not cold in Mecca. No, no. It's not cold. Never. Never ever. So don't t- take something that is very thick. We will go together, inshallah. Okay. Now, and he, of course, wears the slippers, as I showed you last time. Slippers. He cannot wear shoes in Hajj. No shoes for men. Slippers. So this is... Um, Ali, go back to Muharramat al-Ihram. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. Sandals. Sandals, and you can buy them from Medina. Sandals that are not sewn. غَيْرُ مَخِيط. This is only for men. یعنی وقتی که می خرید نباید نخ داشته باشه آها احسنت یا سو دیس از فور مین نو ساکس فور مین ات دی تایم اف احرام دونت ویر ساکس اوکی اند یو هاف تو ویر سلیپرز ایدر بیر فوت سم پیپل دی گو بیر فوت بای بیلیو می بیر فوت دی واک بیر فوت اند ادرز دی ویر ساندلز سو this is what you wear. And, um, and some people, they buy extra set in case that this one gets nudges because you are not allowed to wear it. Lost. Lost. Eh, not stolen. No, lost. lost. Huh? It gets mixed. Sometimes it gets mixed. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes in the tent, you are allowed. If you, if you uh, Alison, Alison, if, if you go to the bathroom, you are allowed temporarily to keep the upper side away and go inside the bathroom. So sometimes you come back and it's not there. So, yeah, it gets mixed. This is for men. This is for men. Things that you are not allowed were you all here last week when I displayed the women's ihram? Who was not here last week? You were not? You, you know about the women's ihram. You are, not, you are going to hajj? Okay, inshallah. So, uh, can Amal bring me the sisters? Yeah. This is also designed by Armani. So, uh, Of course, women, they can have their own inner dress. Okay, they can have it. They can have it. They are not like men. But at the top of that, it is recommended that they wear this. Raise the pants. No, this is not the pants. This one. Uh huh. For comfort. Okay, this one. Uh huh. And then at the top of it, this one. Raise this one. This one. Yalla, this one. Do you see this one? And then you have the makna to cover your head. This one, the makna. And some women, they add one fourth, one extra piece, which is the chador, when you wear it during the salat. The chador to cover the whole body. Yeah. So this is what, yeah, wear the makna. Uh-huh. Inshallah, you go to hajj one year. Inshallah ta'ala. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, don't do it the Iranian style. Half of the hair is there. <laughs> then get this side. Tight. tight. Yalla, tight. Yalla, khalas. Okay. Now, but they are not allowed, they are not allowed to wear gloves. Women are not allowed to wear gloves, huh? No gloves. And they are not allowed to cover their face. And there is a reason for that. Although covering the face for women is sometimes recommended, but in Hajj is forbidden. Why? 
during the state of ihram چرا نمیتونن آها چرا نمیتونن صورتشون رو بپوشونن لا يجوز تخطيه الوجه عند الاحرام لماذا because before islam the aristocratic families in arabia their women they used to cover their face not out of chastity but out of arrogance because they did not want cheap men to look at them they treated men as slaves so the slave is not allowed to look at the face of his master so they would cover their face out of arrogance this was the reason so when islam came islam said there is no more arrogance during hajj women whether rich or poor they are equal they are the same they have to uncover their face <coughs> See, the covering the face, which is, re- which is recommended sometimes, but when it comes to hajj, hajj is, hajj, is about, hajj is about equality. Hajj is about not having disparity between the classes. Therefore, in hajj, you really cannot distinguish people who's who. Here, when you can distinguish it from their cars, their mansions, their address, but in hajj, how do you distinguish you don't know sometimes there is a multi-millionaire sitting next to you and you don't know he's wearing the same thing this is the beauty of Hajj so they cannot cover their face women لا يجوز تخطية الوجه في الحج then for women who are during their period they cannot go to Masjid al-Nabi in Medina and Masjid al-Haram in Mecca there is only one area in Mecca that you can go to. And I am going to explain this to you. Don't worry that you are not going to be deprived from your Hajj. You still can do your Hajj, but with some modifications and some changes. See, if this is Masjid al-Haram here, imagine this is Masjid al-Haram and the Kaaba is in the middle, okay? Here, on this side, is Safa and Marwa. This is Safa here, Safa, and this is Marwa. This is Safa and Marwa. This is Mar- here you can, women, women who have a problem, they can go there during their period. They can stay in this area, but not in this area. Not this, in this area. So women during their, go back to the forbidden things. And we would tell you, inshallah, when you are there, uh, tomorrow, I mean next uh, su- uh, Saturday, next week, the final session, we're going to take some 20 minutes for sisters. You have to be there because there are special ahkam, special ahkam for women who are during their uh, uh, menstrual cycle. So, use, using any type of scent or atr or perfumes is not permitted whether it is a natural scent whether it is in the soap in the shampoo in the uh, moisturizer whatever type of sunscreen if it has if it does have you know some scent good scent not permitted Uh if it is no 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 it's not okay it's not okay I'll, I'll tell you the next one the next one, applying oil. Applying oil, no. Magar baray elaj bashe. Amma agar baray elaj na bashe nimitunit. You stay away from all types of oils unless it is really necessary. You have rash, okay, and the doctor says you have to apply this to your skin. Only in that case, as a medication, as a medication. Not as a preventive, not as a preventive, as a treatment, medication. You can apply the oil. So no scent. Each guna at your buya khosh, na mi tawanit khodetun bezarid, na mi tawanit hatta istishmam konid, na mi tunid. La yajuz la istamalu al-atr wa la istinshaq al-atr. Yani ida mararta wa anta muhrim bi mantaqa. فيها رائحة طيبة عليك أن تمسك أنفك وتمتنع. Neither smelling it nor wearing it. Again, why we do this? 
Ahsant. Allah wants you to be natural. Natural. Allah says, this is here. We are not a wedding party here. I want you to be natural here. Because some people sometimes they afford to buy expensive perfumes. Others they can't afford. So Allah says, here you are like others. So then we come to the most important part, the spirit of Hajj. The spirit of Hajj. فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ فَلَا رَفَثَ No lying in Hajj. Of course, there is all the time. All the time we should say the truth. We should do our best to speak the truth all the time. But when it comes to this trip, the Hajj, you strictly should train yourself to stay away from lying, from quarreling, جِدَال, quarreling. Even if you are not angry, but you are doing jidal, something, you know, in vain. Talking about something, he says this, and you say that, and you argue. Even that, stay away from it, quarreling, because it is going to spoil your hajj. Allah wants you to be the most forgiving. The most forgiving in this trip. Allah wants you to be the most polite, the most quiet person. If you have the power of speech, use it with Allah. Talk to Him. Don't talk to people. If you are like me, a talkative person, use this to speak to Allah, not to people. So no quarreling. And no killing of insects. No killing of insects. All type of insects have diplomatic immunity in Hajj. You cannot harm them. You cannot harass them. You cannot kill them. You cannot push them away. Unless you are attacked. You are attacked, let's say, by a scorpion. Then you can defend yourself. Other than that, if they are not attacking you, not only insects, any type of animal. Any type of animal, we are not allowed to harass them. For two reasons. One, because we are wearing the ihram, state of consecration. Second, the land is sacred. Allah says, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ amina. Whoever enters this, vicinity, my house, he is immune, he is protected. No one can harass him. I said last week, even the criminals, when they take refuge in Allah's house, they cannot go and grab them and arrest them. They wait until they leave. Once they leave, they arrest them. But while they are in Mecca, in the Haram, they cannot arrest them. Even the criminals are not arrested. وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ amina. Then, Again, plucking or shaving the hair in the body for men and women is not allowed during the ihram time. During the ihram and cutting the nails is not allowed unless when we do the taqseer. Inshallah, I tell you about the taqseer. It is, musta- it is wajib, of course, to cut your hair and mustahab to clip your nails. One of them, let's say, symbolic. Just one. Okay? Now, uh, removing the, the body hair is highly recommended and mustahab before hajj, before taking the shower of ihram. It's, it's highly recommended that you remove the, 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 the body hair. But while in the state of ihram, do not do that. Do not pluck. Huh? Don't try to, or don't cause anything, don't do anything that it, it results in in losing your hair or, or, or cutting or whatever. يعني حلاقة الشعر أو قص الشعر أو قطع الشعر لا يجوز لا الشعر ولا الإضافر. إن إن دو تشيز خيلي مهمة هم شو ميجان؟ نا بفارسي شو ميجان؟ ناخون قرفتان جايز نيست. مگر در حالة خروج از إحرام و قط کردن موهای یا سر یا هر جای بدن جایز نیست کوتاه کردن یا شیف کردن جایز نیست then uh, we mentioned this pulling and cutting leaves of trees grass of the haram in the haram while we are in the haram and by the way once we leave Medina 
Once we leave Medina, immediately after Masjid al-Shajara, the Haram begins. Immediately after. This is Masjid al-Shajara here, and there is a line here. It says, once we pass this line, although we have 300 miles to get to Mecca, Mecca is here, but you have entered the Haram. Haram is the sacred land. I mentioned this last week. Haram is the vicinity that surrounds Mecca for hundreds of miles, and it is sacred so it has a special rules. These rules have to be observed and adhered to and respected. One of them, no hunting. Once you enter this desert, no more hunting. No more cutting the trees. So this is cutting the trees not only inside the city of Mecca. 300 miles before Mecca. Once we enter the Haram. If this is Mecca, imagine this is, I mentioned this last week, but just to remind you. If this is Mecca here in the middle, in the middle, the haram is the desert that surrounds it. And it could be 300 miles. Some areas less, 100 miles. Some area, areas 400 miles. This is the desert that surrounds Mecca. It's called haram. Haram from sacredness. This land is sacred. Then, of course, wearing arms, carrying arms, weapons of mass destruction... Strictly forbidden, huh? Do not think of nuclear weapon taking with you. Oh, don't. This is against the United Nations Charter. Don't carry any weapon with you. No wives. I mean, sorry. <laughs> no knife. If, if knife is considered... No, no, really, I'm not kidding here. If the knife is big and considered weapon, you cannot carry it with you. No guns. No, uh, no, no weapons. No weapons during the ihram. Leave your weapons here in America. Don't take it with you in Mecca because there would be no domestic violence, inshallah, there. You don't need the weapon. And this is also important. Number 11. During the state of ihram, no marriage ceremony. Neither you do marriage for yourself nor be a witness. If they tell you someone who is desperate, he wants to do nikah. And he says, Hisham, I want you to be a witness. Tell him, no, inshallah, after Ahram. See you after Ahram. So do not, do not conduct marriage ceremony. Don't do it for yourself and nor others. And of course, any relationship of that type with your wife is not, is not accepted. And it ruins, this one ruins your hajj. You have to go next year and repeat the hajj altogether. Because for all these things, there is some penalty to pay. It either sacrifice a sheep or to give a, a handful of food, let's say rice or dates to the poor, for all, all these things. There are details in these. But for this one, during the ihram, your hajj, you have to finish your hajj, complete it, but you have to come next year. So the penalty is to go to hajj following year. And of course, even uh, looking with intention also is not, is not permitted. It would ruin your hajj, your ihram. Looking with uh, this and these, all these things are not permitted in hajj. However, those of you who go with their wives, some people tell me, tell me can I hold her hand? Yes, you can hold her hand because this is not. I mean, she's your wife. You cannot leave her in the middle of the street. When you cross the street, even in the tawaf, you can hold her, but not with desire. This is the difference. Depending on your intention. Without desire, yes. Consider your wife there as your aunt, inshallah. You know? yeah. Just for 10 days, say, this is my aunt. Or your elderly sister. So, this is how dealing with them. And then... Beautifying oneself, tajmil, through, you know, putting either powders or oil or makeup or whatever, or haircut, any type of beautification during ihram is forbidden. لا يجوز أن تجمل المرأة نفسها ولا الرجل بأي شكل كان جايز نيس هر نوع, هر نوع میکپ اینجا حتی اگر یه قطره هم باشه جایز نیست به هیچ جای بدن به هیچ جای بدن 
So do not beautify yourself. You are in the eyes of Allah, you are beautiful inshallah. If we go there with good intention, good, good spirit, with ikhlas, you look in the eyes of Allah, you are the most handsome person in his eyes. If we try to control ourselves. And this is what we want to do. We want to look beautiful in the eyes of Allah. And no eyeliner or kuhul for men and women. Sometimes kuhul, especially in the Eastern culture, in Iran and Iraq and other countries, Afghanistan, it's not used for beautification. It is used, in the old days, they used to use the kuhul to strengthen your vision. And it is mustahab, by the way, mustahab for men and women. It is recommended that to wear the kuhul. I remember when I was a child, you know, even uh, scholars and ulama, they used to wear kuhul. Nowadays, no, it's only for women. It is mustahab. But in hajj, do not do that. Don't wear kuhul in hajj. Now, do not go to the dentist. If you want to go, go now before going to hajj. Do not extract your tooth or do not draw blood out of your body. Don't donate blood there in Hajj. You can do it after Ihram. But during Ihram, no extracting of the tooth, neither taking the blood out. Unless emergency. For emergency, there are rules for emergency. بنابراین نمیتونید دندانتون رو بکشید اونجا و خون هم نمیتونید از بدنتون خارج کنید لا يجوز اخراج الدم الا اذا كان حادث يعني واحد حادث بس هو لا يجوز ان يخرج الدم من بدنه ولا ان يقتلع ضرسه او اسنانه and of course hunting hunting is also forbidden all types of hunting whether they are animals or human beings do not hunt there be safe and keep the people around you safe. These are the forbidden things. Muharramatul ihram. And we're going to re remind you of this, inshallah, when we are in Medina and also when we are doing the ihram and going from Medina to Mecca, inshallah. So we board the bus from Masjid al-Shajara. Where do we go? We go to Mecca, inshallah. And that journey is a nightly journey. Why do we do this journey in night? Can, can, I, can we do it during the day? Hmm? Possible. Huh? Possible? Possible? You don't know why. So why, why do we do it always during the evening? Uh-huh. We do it in the evening, although you can do it anytime. Anytime. The ihram you can... But if you do it during the day, men cannot cover. Men, you miss the covering here, it's missing. No, we do have it. Is Where is it? Not yeah. among those, no. Yeah. Uh, no. Where is it? Shelter. Seeking shelter. Seeking shelter, yes. For men, no amama. So you're going to see me, inshallah, in this trip without amama all the time. No cup, okay? Yeah. No cap, no kufi. No agal, no whatever. Okay? And no umbrella for men. You cannot shelter yourself from rain, wind, and sun for men. But for women it's okay. For us, therefore when we travel from Medina to Mecca, if we travel during the day and day is sunny day, then we cannot shelter ourselves from sun. So we have, to, we, we have to sit at the top of the bus or, or <laughs> that's what they used to do in the old days but now the Saudi government said no, this is dangerous. So there are some roofless, roofless buses if people travel during the day. There is no roof. Yeah. Like England. Ahsan. Some of them they don't have those who have to travel during the day. But we're going to travel during the night, so to avoid this. Because many people, they get sick because of the wind. So we travel after sunset, to avoid this. If you travel after sunset, it's okay to go inside the bus. 
Very hot. The weather is very hot. Yes. So we arrive in Mecca, inshallah, around midnight. Bakti Kimirisim Beshahri Makke, Hudude, Saat Dawazah Shab, Takriban, Undakta Mirisim, Nasal Hawali Muntasaf al Layl, inshallah, Ila Mecca al Mukarrama. Then we're going to go to the building first. Brothers and sisters, we're going to go to the building. Why do we go to the building? For two things. Remember, for two things, we go first to the, we check in first, in our building. Number one, to put your valuables inside the building. If you have money, if you have documents, you have to leave them in the building, number one. Number two, you have to do the wudu, because the tawaf requires wudu. Sa'i does not require wudu, but tawaf does require wudu. So you have to do wudu. And wudu around Masjid al-Haram is very difficult. Bathrooms are very crowded and they are not clean. Yes. First, we check in the hotel, the building. We put the valuables. You leave your money in the room with the Hamladar, with Ali al-Asadi. And the second thing, you have to use the bathroom and the wudu. Nah, نگاه نکنید قبلا گذاشتن یه چیزی گذاشتن روی آینه نگاه نمی کنید Then we go inshallah to Masjid al-Haram In Masjid al-Haram we do five things Tawaf The prayers of the Tawaf Sa'i between Safa and Marwa Then Taqseer Sa'i and Taqseer So four things We do four things Tawaf The prayers the sa'i, the taqseer. Period. Vale? No, 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 no. Tawaf, prayers of tawaf, sa'i, there is no, no, there is no prayers for sa'i. Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, and then taqseer. Huh? Yes. No, 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 no. See, when we arrive in Mecca, it will be a, around midnight. By the time we go to the building, we check in, we do the wudu we come it will be around 2 a.m. 3 a.m. when we reach Masjid al-Haram huh no rest if you want you can rest but the sooner the better because in Mecca minute by minute it's going to get crowded minute by minute not day by day because people are flocking to Mecca minute by minute so the sooner the better and by the way during the night is better than during the day during the day is sunny and Masjid al-Haram is roofless so it's, it's, it's hot and crowded. So during the night is much even more spiritual during the night. But if you want to take a rest, you can stay in the building. We do tawaf. And tawaf has certain conditions. Number one is niyyah. And the niyyah that I perform the tawaf around the Kaaba seven rounds for what? Umrah, no, no, muhaj, Umrah, for Umrah tittamattu'. Remember, we are in the Umrah now, of the hajj yet. Umrah tittamattu' qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. Seven rounds. Where do we begin? In, in, uh, chizam be shuma migan, ruhaniya karawan, bayad be shuma niyatra migi. Shuma migit ke tawaf mikonam, half short, tawaf mikonam. Dora khani khuda, bari hajj tamattu'. بعدش هم میگید قربتن الله تعالی حالا میخواید به زبان هر زبانی که دلتون میخواد عمره تمت چی گفتم؟ ببخشید عمره تمت تو Then نیت الطواف اطوف حول البيت سبعة اشواط لعمرة التمت تو وليس حج التمت تو قربتن الله تعالی We begin from the black stone الحجر الاسود This one حجر الاسود That has been brought by جبرائيل upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they used to say that this stone was not black it was white when it came from heaven but it turned black because of the sinful deeds of the people it made the stone turn black and there is an angel that has been assigned to this stone from day one to the last day, witnessing on you. 
each and every person who goes to Umrah and Hajj, this angel sees him, he sees you, and he gets your license plate, and he reports to Allah. On the day of judgment, he testifies that Adam came to Hajj on such and such date and day and time. There is an angel standing there. So it is mustahab to greet this storm. Because you are greeting the angel. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, greeting it. So we begin from Hajar al-Aswad, but we don't stand at this point. We begin, we enter the pattern. Can you sh- uh, show me the picture of Tawaf, please? Picture of the cloud. See, this is the pattern. So you have to enter the pattern from 20 meters before. You cannot just cut the people and go and enter. You have to go slowly, slowly. As you move, you get closer to the Kaaba. This is the other schools of thought. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and of course there is a green light. You can see the green light there. That shows you that this point is parallel to Hajar al-Aswad. Because Hajar al-Aswad is down. You cannot see it. You cannot see it. Only people who are close to it can see it. So how do I know this is Hajar al-Aswad? I look at the light. Once I reach the light, this means that you are parallel to Hajar al-Aswad. So you begin the niyyah, you greet Hajar al-Aswad, and you begin the first round, anti-clockwise. Counter. Can we tell the Hajar al-Aswad? Yeah. During, listen to this, very good question. Can we touch Hajar al-Aswad? No. During... The tawaf, you should not touch anything, even the Kaaba. Don't touch. If you touch the Kaaba, you have to repeat the tawaf. Neither the Hajar al-Aswad, which you cannot touch it. Forget about touching Hajar al-Aswad during Hajj. Yeah, you, it's very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. So don't get close to it. Even the Kaaba. Do not touch the Kaaba. Neither touch Hajar Ismail. This is Hajar Ismail, by the way. This wall here is Hajar Ismail. These are recent pictures? This year, yeah. This is Umrah of this year. This is April this year. So this is Hajj al-Aswad. Do not touch. Do not touch with your hand or do not let your shoulder touch Hajj al-Ismail. Leave a distance between the Kaaba and Hajj al-Ismail. Huh? Forbidden, forbidden. You cannot. No touching. During the tawaf, you cannot touch. When you finish the tawaf, you can come to that Kaaba and touch the Hajar Ismail and Kaaba and Hajar al Aswad, but not during the process of tawaf and circumambulating the house. Now, the Kaaba, imagine this is the Kaaba here, okay? This is the Kaaba. How, how are we circulating? Okay, counterclockwise. The shoulder always, the left shoulder, shoulder has to be parallel to the house. Do not do like that if people turn you. Sometimes you get like, sometimes you turn, you know. It happens in Hajj, believe me. Everything happens in Hajj, by the way. So try to go back to your position and make your shoulder parallel to the house. Always, always. Shaneye. Samte chapetun bayad hamishe. Agar yechat. چیز کنن اون خط میخوره به کجا؟ به کعبه نکنه خارج بشید این طرف بشید یا اون طرف بشید اینجوری باید تواف کنید اینجوری شانتون به طرف هم فالکتف الایمن یکون موازیان للکعبه لا یخرج من الکعبه زین حجیه دائما هذا الکتف لازم صوب الکعبه کن نعم ای ای کتف الیسار بعد انتهای که طوفین خو مو هک لا الایسار قلت الايمن عفوا الكتف الايسر من نحكي خمس لغات بعد هاي if you spin around then you have to retreat two steps how many steps you you moved forward you retreat go back and then continue very hard very very hard very hard okay seven four rounds huh do not leave at the six and a half you have to finish the seventh one. And once we finish, go back to the first diagram that shows the Hajar al-Aswad. Uh-huh. See? So we begin from before this line, and when we finish the seventh round, 
We do not exit here. Don't do. This is very dangerous. You cannot cut the people. All the people are moving. So you cannot go this. You have to walk slowly, 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 slowly. It takes you 20 meters to exit. Not immediate exit. Do not endanger people's life there. Do not. People are in groups. Sometimes you see 50 women holding to each other. You cannot separate them. You cannot cut them off. You have to be very patient and very considerate in tawaf. Considerate to the elderly. You're going to see people in their 90s. People who are doing this. They are doing the tawaf. Sick people, elderly people, kids. Be very considerate. After your seven months, if you get stuck and you didn't get out and you continue walking. But eventually you're going to, to leave. So it would be easier. It's okay. It's okay, it's okay yeah. It's not going to reach the eighth one, no. Somehow you're going to, to exit somewhere. It's difficult. The entrance and the exit, the exit is not easy during the Hajj season. Not easy. Yeah. So, but it takes some time. Be patient. You exit. What do we do immediately after Tawaf? وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Show me the diagram of Ibrahim. You want to just make sure that they go between Maqam Ibrahim and Ibrahim. Yeah. Two more points, let me mention there. If you are doing tawaf and it is not a crowded season, but show me the, show me the, the yeah. If you are doing the tawaf during Umrah, let's say, during Umrah, at, what, at one time I was in Masjid al-Haram and there were, the, the entire population of Masjid al-Haram was only 100 people. All the people who were. And that was immediately after 9-11. <laughs> after 9-11, the air, airplanes were empty, hotels were empty. We went, we stayed at the Hilton Hotel, and we were the only group, 50 people at the whole hotel. The only occupants we, were us. That was immediately after 9-11. So I remember we could do, you, you know, we, we could do tawaf. The whole tawaf takes you seven minutes. The tawaf and the salat of tawaf. So quick, it was empty. Now, during that season, you have to do the tawaf between Maqam Ibrahim and the Kaaba from here. But during the Hajj season, when it is very crowded, you are allowed to come from this side here, not that side. From the outside, not the inside. Are you with me? If it is not crowded, you have to do it between the maqam and the Kaaba. But if it is crowded, you can do outside maqam Ibrahim. Because it is much more easier, much more easier to do it outside rather than inside. Especially for women. Women are squeezed there. Women who are not with their relatives, with their husbands, with their mahram, with their brothers. They are squeezed there. And it is not appropriate for them. This is maqam Ibrahim. Allah says, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Immediately after the tawaf, we stand and we do the salat behind. But not immediately, immediately behind. Because those are the, you know, during the uh, official visit. You cannot st stand immediately behind. When Allah says behind, it could be 40 meters behind. Whenever you can find a spot for the prayers. Do not interrupt people's tawaf. Let them do the tawaf. It is not halal that you interrupt, you stand in the middle to do your prayers while people are doing tawaf. Let them do the tawaf. The priority goes for those who do tawaf first and then salat second. Two ruka'ah. I'll come to the salat. But one more thing about the tawaf. Now, of course, Hajj is very crowded season, and you are first. Uh, those of you who are there for the first time, sometimes you get disoriented. Sometimes you are shocked when you see the Kaaba. Or you want to talk to Allah, so you miss the rounds. You don't know whether this is the third or the fourth. So what do we do here? Not to miss. There are two things. Either you wear the khatam, this one. This one. If you wear it for zina, beautification is, is haram. But if you wear it because it is aqiq, aqiq, ruby, 
it's mustahab, then it is okay. So depending on your intention, is this for zina, for beautification and attraction, or for mustahab? Because it is mustahab to wear the aqiq, especially during the prayers. So if you wear something like that, you might count with this. So this is the first round. When you go to the second, the third, the fourth, this is one way. The second way which is better than this is what? Is the booklet that you have, I gave you last week. The booklet of dua. So when you carry this with you, for each round there is one dua. Is that possible to have this? Yes, yeah, it's possible. So for each round there is one dua. So you know that you finish the first, when you finish the first dua, you know you were, you, you were in the first round. Then you go to the second. This way, you would not. Bibi need dua ya shota haf tom. Dua ya shota shishom, pan jom, so won. You can, you can, don't worry. Yes, yes. Yeah, of course. Har zikri ke mi khayi. Dua ya Abu Hamza ro bekhuni. Dua ya Jawshan Kabir bekhuni. Dua ya Kumail bekhuni. با خدا حرف بزنید دیگه حرف هر حرفی که دارید با خدا بزنید you can either stick to the formal duas or informal you need to chat with Allah because you are in his house now so there is no nothing forbidden to, to share with Allah tell him everything in your heart everything whether you want to talk to him you want to pray to him you want to ask him you want to confess to him that is the time. That is the prime time. While you are doing the tawaf, you speak to your Lord. And don't be distracted. Huh? Again, shaitan is there for us. If someone pushes you, don't get angry. This is hajj. Be a forgiving person. There are some people, you know, in hajj, there are some people who go from all four corners of the world. Some of them, they have not been to school. They, they are from a village, you know. They don't know how to walk. They push. They are, some people, they panic. The elderly, they really panic. They fear that they're going to die. So they panic. So be careful with those. Be considerate. Be very considerate with those people. If they push you, if they do something bad, do not pay back. Control yourself during that. Tawaf and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if we lose the wudu, you have to maintain wudu during the seven rounds and the salat. You have to have wudu. Now, if you lose your wudu, if you have done, if you have finished the fourth round, you have done four full rounds, then let's say in the middle of the fifth round, in the middle of the fifth one, you lose your wudu, or you start bleeding, you start bleeding, or women, they feel they, they are, you know, in their, you know, period, or you touch najasa, something najis, then you have to exit immediately from the nearest point. Exit, clean yourself, if the ihram is najis, change it, بله روی زمین میشه بله مردم دیگه شو چند میلیون خیلی از اینا نمیتونن خودشون رو کنترل کنن ولی میان میشورن البته میان میشورن ولی گاهی وقت پاتون میشه دیگه در چیز همه چیز جایزه اونجا then exit at the nearest point clean your body you change the ihram and come back and resume from where you left I said you have to take extra with you. No, 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 no. You can, you can go to the building. Yes, yeah. Or, or if it is okay to, uh, you know, release some of your ihram, let's say the pants, let's say, nobody can see you, then you just leave it somewhere, you know, and do it without the ihram. Then you come back and you do from where you, you begin from where you left. But, if you have not finished the fourth round, then you start all over again. Okay? You start all over again. Do you have any questions here? What if you miss something? You don't know whether it's this, this. It becomes, it becomes void. You have to start all over again. If the ring did not help, 
a friend with you, you ask him which round, sometimes they, they tell you, we are in the third, on the fourth. If you had no friend with you, no ring to count, no booklet, and you are confused, and you try to remember you could not, you start all over again. Befalme. Na, na, na. Mokka et tawaf ne mitunit. Bale, masjede in ke masjede dige. Mitunit. Bale khanum ha mishe. Bale khanum ha mitunit. Bale. Yes. Uh, you can, it's not haram, but uh, this is not, leave, leave the pictures for, for when you come in the evening, when you finish, you are done with the Umrah. You can take pictures in Masjid al-Shajara, but ihram, the first tawaf and first sa'i, you have to focus on that, don't take pictures. Can but go back to the hotel and come back? Of course, every day we're going to go back, twice, three times. No, no, not yet, not yet. We have to finish. There are things. We said four things. So we finish the tawaf. After the tawaf, what do we do after the tawaf? Salat. No, no, salat, salat. Don't forget, huh? You cannot go for sa'i and leave the salat. Immediately after the tawaf, we do salatul tawaf. Salat. What is the knee of the salat? Hmm? Yeah. It's like the morning prayers, two rak'ah. And it is mustahab to recite after Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Jahd. What is Jahd? قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدْ وَلَا أَنَا عَابِدٌ مَا عَبَدْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدْ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلْيَدِينَ Mustahab to recite this after. But if you can't and if you get confused and crowded, then stick with قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Okay? Huh? To in kitab ha gaman na kunam na na Bala Shara mitun? Bala Na mitunan mizorit Ino mizoran, yedune mizoran Bala tu madine tu masjid dar nayorit Migiran as shuma Tu makke azadit mitunit این در حالت چیزه حاج خانم این آره نه نگران نباشید خیلی کم احرام نجس میشه نه نه من ندیدم تا حالا ولی مسئله رو دارم میگم نگرانش نباشید حالا هم اگر شد یه نفر خود مسئول چیز میاد با شما دیگه میاد شما رو میبره و میاره دیگه بله نه نه با ماشین ده دقیقه است تونل هست آکه بله سو so, Two rak'ah behind Maqam Ibrahim. But we will do it together, inshallah. Now, Hajj season is very crowded. And you know, under normal circumstances, a woman cannot stand before the man in her prayers, in front of a man, for technical and logistic reasons. Because the salat involves ruku' and sujood, and it is not appropriate for women to stand before the man. So what do we do there in Mecca? Mecca is hectic, you know. Nobody is organizing, oh, men here, women there. They get mixed. So what do we do in this case? See, men and women are together here. Do you have another picture of Salat? Uh-huh. In this case, in this case, men, when you choose a spot, and there are not so many spots, huh? Someone finishes the prayers immediately when he leaves, you occupy that place. Immediately. You wait and you see people are doing Salat al-Tawaf. Once they finish, immediately you go there. At the time of Takbiratul Ihram, there should be no women in front of you, neither on the right or left. At the time of Takbiratul Ihram. But if you say Allahu Akbar, and suddenly a woman stands before you, then this is not your problem. You continue your prayers. This is her problem. Or she stands to your right, to your immediate right. But if there is a man standing here, there is a woman next to him, you can pray. I am saying immediate left and right. Okay? Or immediate front. But if there is a man in front of you and before him there is another woman, then it is okay to pray. Are you with me, Adam? So once you say, Allahu Akbar, 
suddenly a sister comes and she stands either next to you and in front of you. You may continue your prayers, but not before you begin the prayers. Okay? And sisters, you also, you should not stand before a man or next to him. But if he comes later on and he stands next to you or, or uh, behind you, then you finish your prayers. Two rak'ah, like the morning prayers. And you have to work on your qira'ah, your recitation. Try to correct your recitation. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Try to work on your recitation. Not Allah. Allah. And you can do it, I know. I, when I listen to some reciters from India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Africa, sometimes they recite better than Arabs. Don't tell me, say it, this is the way God created me. Work on it. Work on your accent. Not Allah. 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 You have to exercise. From tonight, inshallah, go home after dinner with your wife and start exercising. La ilaha illallah. Not la ilaha. La ilaha illallah. Mm -hmm. Huh? Either, either way. Either way, you have the choice. This prayers, either way, either loud or silent. So work on your recitation. Ruku', what is wajib in the ruku' is just one word. Subhana Rabbi. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. In the ruku', in the sujood, one word. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. That is the minimum requirement in the ruku'. In the ruku', Subhana Rabbi al Azim, not even wa bihamdah. What we add the bihamdah. It's mustahab. The more you, you, the more you say athkar, the more thawab you get. But what is required, the minimum requirement is Subhana Rabbi al Azim. This is in the ruku' Sujood, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Then you may add to it Subhana Rabbi al Azim wa bihamdah. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Either three times or five times, subhanAllah, or seven times, odd numbers. Okay? Or, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. But the minimum requirement is, subhana rabbi al azim In salat al-tawaf, do not try to prolong the salat. Don't. Because people are pushing you here. And you have to leave the place for others to come after you. Don't stick there and don't move. Do the salat, quick one, and leave. And leave the room for others to come. This is a very crowded place. Some people, they, they only think of themselves. They don't think about other hujjaj. In hajj, be considerate to others. Be considerate to others. Share this land and this space and this time with other servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do the minimum salat. Huh? Don't do salat ja'far al-tayyar. Do not prolong or, or recite slowly, slowly. No. Make the salat very efficient, quick, swift, so you can leave and go and someone else would come there. Okay? The qunut, make brief qunut. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That's it. Don't recite dua Abu Hamza al-Thamali because it's really crowded. And then when people push you and you are moved, you have to go back, stand still, either in the, in the old position or the new position, location, and repeat what you said while they were pushing you. Because the qara'a, the qara'a, the recitation of hamd and surah, and the ruku', you have to stand still and recite. You cannot move while you are reciting. So if you get pushed and moved, you have to repeat what you said while you were moving. Are you with me? Bale? Na. Na. Yani na namazetun ra'e aade kunid. Un jomle ra ke goftid. Dar hali ke shuma ra hol mi dadan. Un jomle ra tekrar kunid. Na hamay namaz. Therefore, and they going to push you there. I'm telling you, huh? It's very, very crowded. People before you, after you, on your right, on your very crowded place. Hajj season is the most crowded. So you have to do the salat in a very efficient way, very swift, and you get over with it. 
Then after Salat, where do we go? We move from there to it is mustahab after the Salat to drink from Zamzam water there. I remember Zamzam back when I went to Hajj the first time I went to Hajj, I was five years old. I remember Zamzam was open, was like a, a pond where you can go down the stairs and there is a big pond and you can drink from there. That was back in the late 60s. But then slowly, slowly they started to uh, uh, you know, limit that to until five years ago they closed and they shut that pond completely. So you don't see, you don't go under because under the Masjid al-Haram there, there is a second story building there. There is basement there. So the, the pond was there in the basement. But it is no longer there. They left some faucets for you to get something to drink from Zamzam water and to wash your, your face, put it on your body and then move. It is mustahab, not wajib. Huh? Mustahab. Mustahab. And sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, during the Hajj season, we have to skip some of the mustahabs. Because you have to focus on what is wajib. Some people, they go after the mustahab, then they're going to miss what? The wajib. Then we go to Safa and Ma. This was the, the Zamzam will uh, uh, back in the 70s. Well, back in the 70s and 80s. But now they shut this. You cannot see this anymore. There are no more stairs. People going down. Where do we go from Salat al-Tawaf? We go to Safa and Marwa. Inna al-Safa wal-Marwa min sha'air Allah. Faman hajja al-bayta aw i'tamar fala junaha alayhi an yattawaf bihima wa man tatawwa khayran fa inna Allah shakirun Alim. These two mountains were very visible back in the 60s and 70s. You can see the mountain there, but no, nowadays there is no more mountain. They clipped them. They started to cut them, cut them, cut them, until two years ago we went and there is no more mountains. Because, because of the expansion. I remember the Mas'a, the Sa'i, this area, was so narrow back in the 60s. And there were shops here, shops. People sell fruits, you know, all sorts of things. Jewelry stores here, you know. There were shops overlooking the Mas'a. But nowadays, you know, they made it so huge and very big. They expanded it. You know, it, uh, you know until six, seven years ago, the traffic used to come to standstill. You would stand there 15 minutes, you can't move. But now... Three years ago, they expanded the Mas'a. They took from the outside. And they stretched it outside. Nowadays, you can move in full freedom. And these are not this year's pictures. Umrah. Umrah this year? Really? I think it's even bigger than that. However, nowadays, it's... Uh, this is the old one. This is the old one. So... And this is also has a story, beautiful story. You know why we do the Sa'i. Many of you know that Hajar salam was searching for water for her baby Ismail. And she started running between the two mountains. When she comes, when she was standing on Safa, she saw the mirage at the Marwa. She thought that there is a lake there. So she was running. When she reached Marwa, she could not find anything. Then she went back. She made a U-turn going back to Safa seven times until she finished. When she finished her seventh round, she realized that Ismail is not crying anymore. He was screaming. So she came back to him. She thought that he's dead. After crying for hours and hours out of thirst, she thought he's dead. He's finished. So when she came she found that the water is gushing down from underneath his little feet. So she knew that this is a miracle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this little baby that was left in the desert with his mother, Allah as a blessing and karamah for him, he made this, this uh, 
well gushes out and it has been running for over 4,000 years. For over 4,000 years. Millions of hujjaj, they drink and they take with them home. They ship it with, you know, other shipments and still the water is running from that. And this is almost a miracle. It is a miracle. Really, it is a miracle. But why do we do this after 4,000 years? Because the water there is plenty. And especially from this well there. It would not end. So you can take as much as you can. But the dust is limited. Stones and dust are limited. If people want to ship back home, then... You know, you have to then bring from China. We have to buy dust from China. And, you know. So, but why do we do the sa'i, my dear brothers and sisters? Sa'i has a mystical and spiritual meaning. And Allah says in the Quran, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى ثُمَّ يُجْزَاهُ الْجَزَاءَ الْأَوْفَ Sa'i is for us to know that this life is the life of struggling and working. This is not the life of relaxation. You go and sleep and you have no responsibility. And one day you wake up, people are serving you. You don't have to work anymore. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to worry. There is no such thing in this life. Allah says in this life, you have always to run and run and run and work very hard. This is why we move between these two mountains. We leave the Safa in pursuit of a goal in this life, going to Marwa. We arrive in Marwa, but Allah says, Allah says the journey has not finished. Go back again. We go to Safa, and then the journey, we think the journey has ended. Allah says, no, not yet. Go back. Back and forth in this life. Back and forth. Because this life, we have to accomplish goals. Allah says, we did not create you in vain. Just eat, drink and sleep and have fun. You have, a, you, have, you have a goal to accomplish in this life. You know, sometimes, even during this last Umrah, many people with us, some of them were elderly. And you were there and you saw. Some people would tell me, Sayyid, we are tired. Back and forth. And, and you know, each, each round is about 600 meters. Uh, 450 meters, you know. 450, almost half a kilometer. This is a marathon, you know. This is four, four, I mean, four, four kilometers, it's, it's a marathon. And they get tired. I tell them, no, you should not get tired. Still, still you have to struggle. And this is a lesson for us. You don't give up. You should not give up in this life. Allah says, right to the last minute, I want you to run. No, no, no. No, going and coming. So, three, uh, f uh, four times going and it's three times coming. We're going to begin with Safa and the last round is going to end in Marwa. Okay? And each round is uh, 450 meters. And for those who cannot make it, uh, they can go on wheelchair. They can go on wheelchair. For the elderly and the sick who cannot walk, they can go on wheelchair. So, life is about struggling. We run and run until we reach the end line. This is the reason. And then, in some parts of this mas'a, you can see uh, two columns are painted with green. And this is an indication that only men in this area they have to run they have to jog and run because in exactly in this area Hajar alayhi salam when she used to get close to her son Ismail she did not want to hear him crying and screaming so she would run so she cannot hear the voice and the cries of her baby Ismail in this area which is about I would say 30 meters 30 meters length we run only men run women do not run but don't just leave your wife and 
and go running, you know. Don't go too fast. Go in a way that your wife and your companions, they can reach you. No, no, no. No. Harwala, yes. No, 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 they cannot. It's, uh, it's not recommended for women to run. It's not recommended. It's not appropriate also for them to run. It's not appropriate. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I, w I don't want to confuse you on this. I'll leave it for s some other time because I want to speak about the basics now and then after that, the third session, I will tell you about the expansion. It has certain rules. But I don't want to confuse you now. So we begin in Safa and look at the crowd. No, no, go to the first one. Uh -huh. See the crowd in Mas'a? This is when we leave Safa, I believe. This is going towards uh, Safa. Going towards Safa, yes. Yeah, going from Marwa to Safa. Seven times. Once we finish, inshallah, and Sa'i has a knee. Also we say that I run between the two mountains, Safa and Marwa, for Umratul Tamattu, Urbatan Lai Ta'ala. Sa'i mikunam bayni, Safa wa Marwa, half short, baray umri, Tamattu. As'a bayna Safa wa Marwa, sab'ata ashwatin, li Umratul Tamattu, Urbatan Lai Ta'ala. Then we finish where? At Marwa. Once we finish at Marwa, now we come to the end of the Umrah by cutting our hair. But do not shave her. This is wrong. I don't want to see this one. This one in Hajj, this one in Umrah. Big difference, huh? Because some people, they get confused. In Umrah, he shaves all his hair. So when it comes to Hajj, he's left with no hair. Nothing to shave. So don't do this in Umrah. Do this. Therefore, it is recommended that you carry with you, whether you are male or female, a small scissor. Not a big one, huh? Small scissor. With you, put it with you. So once we reach, once we reach Marwa, we finish the Sa'i, we come to the last item, which is Taqseer. Taqseer symbolizes the exit from Ihram. You have to exit, release yourself, because you are in a state of Ihram. Things are forbidden to do. So how do I exit from it? By cutting part of my hair. Just a little bit. Symbolic, huh? Symbolic. Just symbolic. Okay? Just a little bit. Okay? And mustahab to clip your nails. If you have some. And you have to do the niya. And the niya is, I am exiting myself from the state of ihram for umrat al-tamattu' qurbatan lai ta'ala. أقصر للإحلال من إحرام أقصر للإحلال من إحرام عمرة التمتع قربة الله تعالى مهام ركوتاه ميكنم برأي خارج شدن از إحرام عمرة التمتع Now do not cut for others before cutting for yourself Once you cut for yourself you are allowed to cut other people's hair. But if you have not done it for yourself, don't begin with others. Begin with yourself. And then you cut, you say, Bismillah, Allah Akbar, small. And then don't throw it there, huh? Don't anywhere. There is a bin. You have to go to the bin and throw it inside the bin. Okay? And if you have no hair, okay, in that case you take your nails, clip the nails. If no nails, and no mustache, and no beard, then what do you do in this case? Huh? No, 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 no hair chest. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't. You have to cover yourself. In that case, you bring the scissor and pass it over your symbolic, symbolic gesture. Pass it over your, your head. That's it. Yeah, just pass it over your head. That's it. If you have no hair, pass it over your head. Okay, then this is taqseer. We call this taqseer and taqseer signifies the exiting from the state of Ahram. لا لا قطع هذا مو مو هذا قطع الشعر مو مو شسمه. Okay, and وتكون بآلة حادة. Yeah, uh, Hisham is asking me very worthy question. He says, can I plug? No, you cannot. And it has to be with something sharp, a sharp item, either a knife or 
a scissor. But not with a piece of wood, for instance, or a gun, or whatever. Don't do that to yourself. Do not hurt yourself. So once we do the taqseer, inshallah, the umrah is over. And this process could take something between two hours to four hours. From the time we come to Masjid al-Haram, we arrive, until the time we do taqseer, depending on the crowd, and depending on something else, the time of the prayers. If the muaddin says, Allahu Akbar, Fajr prayers, then you have to stop. You cannot continue. They don't let you continue. So if you are, if you have not done the fourth round, huh? Then after the salat you have to begin all over again. But if you have done the fourth round of tawaf and sa'i both, suppose you have done the fourth round of tawaf and the muaddin says Allah Akbar, they say salah, salah, salah. Then you stand there, you do the salat, and then you 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 you. you you finish the rest. And the same thing with the sa'i. Suppose you did the tawaf, the prayers of the tawaf, but you were doing the sa'i, you finish the fourth round of the sa'i, and the muaddin says, Allahu Akbar. Then you stand there, you do the salat, and then you go back and finish what is left for you. But if you have not finished the fourth round, you have to start the sa'i or the tawaf all over again. Are you with me? So it takes something between two to four hours for the Umrah. Next week, inshallah, we're going to go to the most important part, which is the Hajj, inshallah. After the Umrah, we stay in Mecca sometimes five days, sometimes six days, sometimes seven days, depending on the time of arrival. And um, we go every night to the Masjid al-Haram, but with this dress, no, no more Haram. No more ihram. No, 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 no. You go back to normal dress. You can go back in the morning, noon, afternoon, evening. What we do is that we, we, do, we go at 10 p.m. every night until 2 a.m., four hours. That is the most emptiest time. Other than that, it is very crowded because people sit there and wait for the jama'ah, for the prayers. But after Isha, they go to eat dinner and sleep. That is the best time to go from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. Because at 2 a.m. they start coming for Fajr. Three hours before Fajr, four hours. There you can find a spot to sit, to recite Quran, to pray, pray for your father, mother, family members. And you can do tawaf, mustahab tawaf. Seven rounds, huh? not one round. Mustahab, you do tawaf for your father, mother. You can do one tawaf, but for ten people. Bidun ihram, without ihram, but with wudu. You have to have wudu. Tawaf, whether it is mustahab or wajib, whether it is recommended or mandatory, requires what? Wudu, and the dress has to be clean. Clean meaning no najasa on it, no blood, no urine, no, you know, clean. Sa'i nadrim, sa'iya mustahab nadrim. We do not have mustahab sa'i. Do, do not do mustahab sa'i, mustahab tawaf, only the tawaf, seven rounds. And the tahiyyah of, mas- tahiyyah of every masjid, every masjid has a greeting. When you enter the masjid, it is mustahab to do two rak'ah, like the morning prayers, tahiyyatul masjid. With one exception, masjid al-haram, what is the greeting of masjid al-haram? No, no. How do you greet masjid al-haram? Tawaf, tawaf. The only masjid that the greeting of it is not a prayers is tawaf. So if you want to greet the masjid, once you enter, you begin doing seven rounds. Tawaf and two rak'ah. Two rak'ah, but in the mustahab tawaf, the two rak'ah not necessarily to be behind Maqam Ibrahim. You can do it anywhere inside the masjid. Are you with me? Anywhere. Only, see, this is Maqam Ibrahim. This is Maqam only during the wajib, the umrah, and the hajj, you have to do the prayers here behind. But if you come at other time, then you can, no, leave this. You can do the tawaf anywhere in Masjid al-Haram. I mean, uh, the prayers of the tawaf, anywhere in Masjid al-Haram. Mustahab, yes, yeah. And then you can, while you are in Mecca, some people, they finish the whole Quran in five days, in six days. 
Yeah, you can finish the hukm. You can, but they will check it at the airport because Saudi Arabia, they fear that someone comes and adds something to the Quran or deletes. So do not be surprised that they take the Quran, they check it page by page. It's better to use one and buy one from Mecca. It's better. Huh? Dua, you can take the small booklet with you. Inshallah, next Saturday we're going to tell you what we do during Hajj, inshallah. And that's very important. Huh? You have to be here. You have to be here for the Hajj. Three things I remind you. What I said, let let in Hajj. Three things I remind you. One of them is the issue of taqlid. Do not forget, I mentioned the issue of taqlid. Second, the issue of wasiyah. And third, the issue of khums of the hajj. The money that you are going with it to hajj, you have to pay the khums of it. 20% of that money. Who wants to get the Islamic...